This video is part one of discussing inverses. So inverses. You perform an inverse every day when you undo something. For example, if you take your coat off a hanger and put it on, um, this can be undone. So let's do the steps to see what we can do when we have a function and it's inverse. So if we think about our function as putting on a coat, it's on a hanger, so the first thing that we have to do is take it off the hanger. And then the second thing that we're going to do is that we are going to put your arms in the coat. And then the last step that you're going to do, my son said, well, you check outside to see what the weather's going to be like, decide if you're going to zip it up or not. But I always zip mine up because I'm always cold. So I would zip it. So then the inverse of that, think about what do you do when you take off your coat, when you come home and you're ready to relax. Well, you unzip your coat because it's zipped. Then you take your arms out so you can take it off, out. And then, unless you're my children, you put it on the hanger. So what can you say about the order of the steps in the function f of c and the inverse function f inverse of c? You can say that the order is the opposite order. And you could also say, along with order, we could also say that it's the opposite actions. And I want you to notice here that it says that inverse function f to the negative first c doesn't mean f to the negative one power. It looks like f to the negative one, but I, you'll notice I was saying f inverse of c. That's the way that's read, f inverse of c. So let's do some math. If you add any two numbers, what would you? What is the inverse? Well, you would subtract two. If you wanted to undo adding two, you would subtract two. If you divide any number by negative three, what is the inverse? Well, the inverse would be to multiply, and you would multiply by negative three. You undo with the same thing. Notice when we go back and think about the code in the hanger, I didn't put it on something else. I put it on the hanger just like I had taken it off the hanger. So we keep the negative 3, but we multiply instead of divide. So it's the operation that we need to be the opposite. What is the order of operations for this function? Remember, Jim Das, you got your grouping symbols, exponents, multiply, divide, add, and subtract. So the first thing we do to this x is that we multiply by 2. So we multiply by 2. And then the second thing we do is to subtract the 5. So let's the inverse order of operations for the inverse. Remember with the coat and the hanger, we started with the last thing. I zipped my coat up, the last thing in the function, but I unzipped it in the inverse function. So I'm going to add, do the opposite operation, my 5. And then I'm going to not multiply by 2, but divide by 2. So that means that I start with my x, and I add 5 to it. That's the first step. And then from there, I'm going to divide by 2. And you have to divide everything you've done so far by 2. So x plus 5 all over 2 would be my function, my inverse function. Let's do one more. Again, what's the order of operations? Let's list those operations. So I've got this x. The first thing I would do is inside the grouping symbol. So I would subtract 6 first. And then, after I've subtracted the 6, I would square, or caret 2, if I went my shorthand. So the inverse operations, the opposite of squaring, would be to take the square root. And then the opposite of 6 would be, or subtracting 6, would be to add 6. So remember, it's reverse order, reverse operation. Start with the last thing and make that your first, but do the opposite. And then work your way backward. So we start with x, and the first thing we have to do is take the square root of x, and then it says plus 6. I've already taken the square root of 6, so the plus 6 goes outside the radical. So the f inverse is equal to the square root of x plus 6.